So this is a lecture, I'm going to put a plug for the senior lectures. This was my senior lecture uh, at the end of the residency, and it's something that I've taken and given grand rounds uh, around the country and city. So just a plug for everyone doing their senior lecture this year is what you can use it for. And I've kind of formatted it, formatted it to make it a little shorter for today, and uh, I've given it almost every year to every other year just to kind of give everyone a, a framework for how we're going to make our resident lectures. So. Well, I just have some good pearls, and uh, anyone who was at Guy Carmelli's senior lecture has a lot of kind of similar pearls as his. So what we're going to talk about is preparation of uh, presentations, presentation tools a little bit, speaking, and then just a little, uh, a little bit about the reality of giving a lecture as a resident as well. So why do we care about this? So we're all educators. That's why you guys came to this program, to become leaders in education and whatever you're doing. And even if you're not in an academic program, you're going to be expected to present material or data in some way or form, either to patients, either or you're a uh, medical director, or maybe to um, uh, people who are uh, buying materials for hospitals, things like that. So you're going to be using this uh, no matter what, wherever you are. So first, let's uh, talk about how we prepare. Everybody starts their presentation looking at this screen, right? Where, where do I start? How do I start this presentation? What do I, where, where do I begin? So it's always a little daunting and usually takes me a couple of hours to maybe days to really get to do that first step. And something I learned by, for preparing this lecture and kind of reading about how to make good presentations is a good way to do it is start with your last slide, your conclusion slide. Decide what your learning points for the presentation are going to be and then you can work backwards. So a maximum of five learning points, ideally, for any lecture you're going to give, uh, because uh, most adults, most humans aren't going to be able to take anything more than that back from a presentation. And then start with your conclusion slide, and then make an outline from there. And every lecture should have these basic tenets. So you're going to tell them what you're going to tell them. You're going to tell them in the middle, and then end again by telling them what you told them. So you should frame the lecture this way no matter what. And again, it's a lot about repetition and having just these solid three to five learning points throughout the presentation. So know your audience. Uh, know who you're speaking to. What's their education level? What's the culture of the place you're talking to? This stands for what's in it for me and what their expectations are. And the example I give for this, if you're talking about hyperkalemia to our group, and you start having a slide about k you might get food out of the room. <laughs> but if you're talking to the in internal medicine residents or uh, an internal medicine doc, then you may want to mention it. You may want to mention it and then talk about the evidence against it, but that would be something that they use often. And just in terms of your education level, if you're d doing a presentation on, to medical students, that may be very different to talking to uh, this, this room. And it's always a good thing to remember when you're giving a resident lecture that this room has a, a large span of uh, levels in terms of uh, practice. So PGY1s, PGY20s, uh, and you can kind of uh, frame your lecture that way. So this is a good, I think, uh, Eden set me up for this one. Uh, so multimedia, so videos. So if you're going to have videos or like uh, high-tech multimedia in your lectures, test them. <laughs> test them at home. Test them where you're going to be presenting it. Um, and have a backup. Your lecture should not be completely dependent on uh, some sort of multimedia or video or some format like that. And then know what the setup where you're giving a talk for. Know if they have a dongle. Know if you can use their laptop. Know if you're giving a presentation at Kings County, you may not be able to get on a Dropbox. So have, uh, have backups for where your presentation is stored and how you're gonna give, uh, put that up on the computer. I think this is the biggest thing, I, one of the biggest things I want you guys to take out of this, and it's difficult for resident lecturers because you guys are busy, but rehearsal of a lecture is probably one of the most important things you can do for a lot of reasons. You don't know how you're going to sound, you don't know what, what you're going to say if you only practice it in your head and if you've only made the slides. It's not until you talk it out and realize what you're going to say when those slides come up where it's really going to start become polished. I don't want you to memorize it, I don't want you to have uh, cue cards. I want you to just know what you're going to say for each slide and be able to say it without thinking about it. And then you'll know your timing. And we've all been here for when people come to lecture and it's supposed to be a 20, 30 minute and it goes on for an hour and then Maurice has to tell you that you're done. And you haven't even gone through your whole presentation. And you just have to know your slides. So you can do this with anyone. You can do this to the mirror out loud. You can do it to your uh, infant uh, or toddler son. My, my <coughs> son's heard a couple of lectures. 
Um, another cool way to do it is record yourself and you can email it to people that you trust to listen to you or even do it through FaceTime or Skype if you don't have anyone available right there and then. So just to review that stuff, so being prepared, you want to know, figure out the learning points of your lecture, think about multimedia and the presentation uh, of where you're going to be lecturing, and then practice, 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 and that's going to make your lecture better uh, no matter what. So just a little comment about format. Uh, usually this uh, presentation has kind of some breakout where we do some uh, audience participation, but I don't think I have time for that today. So just when you're thinking about making a presentation, uh, think about using different formats. You can use small group, and this is a good way kind of not to have everyone passively listening to what you're talking about, have people discuss um, certain topics, certain questions. You can do a question uh, or case-based presentation, so you can kind of get the audience uh, thinking about what the, you're talking about, uh, clinically applying it or in applying it in real life. And then simulation is just a great way, whether it's either in the sim lab or just having a kind of a low fidelity uh, presentation or example in front of the room. And this really all just comes down to uh, a Confucius uh, proverb. And if you're involving the audience, it shows that retention is uh, about 70%. And actually, if you somehow make it that the audience or the uh, learners are teaching it afterwards, then the retention uh, pumps up to 90%. Just listening and being passive, it's usually around uh, 30 to 40% retention. So just a little bit about PowerPoint. So slides are not for uh, text, and this is again another common thing that we see. Uh, so for the audience, uh, you want to spend about one slide per, uh, one minute per slide. You want to make sure your font is correct uh, for where you're presenting. And this, these fonts are all different just for examples. This is size 28. This is what any standard presentation body font should be. This is uh, size 36. And this is what the minimum for any uh, title uh, of the slide should be. And I believe this is 42, so they say uh, if you're doing a presentation to a larger room about an audience of over 200, this should be the new standard for your title, 42, and this should be 36 should be your uh, body. So just keep to those standards, five to six words per line, and really only spending about a minute per slide. So this is just a plug for the fact that slides are not uh, for the uh, audience to read. They can read, every, the audience can read faster than you can speak. So it really should, should be something to a pictorial re, uh, pre, reference or some sort of statistic. So about animations, I'm not a big fan of them. I know a lot of people use them. Like uh, I think he can use it pretty effectively in his first slide. It was quick. It was just to make people laugh. Uh, don't put up the animation uh, on a slide that you're going to be talking for like a minute and a half on because then it's just going to loop and everyone's just going to be watching it and then it gets really annoying. So just be careful about that. Pointers are good. Uh, be aware that uh, when you're giving a presentation, you may be nervous. A lot of times if you're using a pointer, you might be doing this and then that's distracting as well. So you can do a, either two-arm approach or just, uh, you can also use the mouse on the uh, computer as well. And then think about alternative design of slides. It doesn't always have to be this kind of thing where you have bullet points, picture, and uh, moving on. An example is this. So this is a, a slide talking a lot about world hunger. And if you do an alternative kind of design, of, uh, probably Guy Cromelli could help you with it. This is a much more effective slide to get, off, get across the point uh, of why world hunger is important. So graphs and tables, we do a lot of these in our presentations, especially when we're presenting evidence-based medicine. Uh, every graph or table or, or um, pictorial that you want to use to uh, give information, you should go through it. it should, if it's on your slide, you should somehow be using it. Um, be careful about very complex uh, tables and graphs, and you should never be apologizing for anything in your presentation because you put it in there. So if it sucks, make it better, uh, or if it, uh, you can't, then take it out. So an example is this. We see this all the time, right? Most of you guys probably can't read it. A lot of the information may not even be important. So reformat this or highlight the things that you want to be highlighted. Another example is this one. We see these are in the here all the time, algorithms. Um, going through ACLS. And then sometimes we see this. This is a, a decent attempt to try to zoom in and uh, show us what's going on at different levels, but it's incredibly blurry. So what I urge you to do is just reformat it. Write it yourself. And then you can put in things that you think is important. It might take you an extra couple of minutes, but it's going to be much more effective in your presentation. So just general speaking, uh, just public speaking tips.
Everyone gets nervous public speaking. Um, I think even the greatest public speakers probably get a little bit of nervous. So some just uh, good uh, tips. Rehearse. I think this helps a lot. If you know your presentation, you know what you're going to say. It's going to help it go a lot better. Um, figure out what you're going to do with your hands. A lot of people have, you know, like clicking pens, tapping, um, or putting hands in your pockets is not the worst thing to do. It can be distracting. Uh, they say bananas help with uh, nerves, and uh, if you're, it's very bad, uh, try maybe a beta blocker. Ideally, <laughs> no, people do that. A low dose beta blocker for public speaking. Ideally, don't drink too much coffee, don't drink too much water, try not to drink a lot of alcohol before or after. <laughs> and um, if you're at all getting stuck or kind of have that uh, lag in terms of the presentation, you don't know what you were going to say. Really just take a deep breath, and if you know your lecture, you're going to be able to move on and uh, figure out where you're going. In terms of your presence in the room, uh, eye contact, a good uh, way to do it is if you're either just going to look all around the room, you don't want to be looking in one place. A Z formation is kind of uh, recommended. You kind of start one area in the room and just slowly go back and forth across the room. Less people think that you're interacting with them, that you're paying attention to them. Uh, if you're going to use notes, uh, try not to write full, a full note cards. It should really just be one to two words to kind of give yourself references to what you're going to say or what, where you're going to be. And then uh, moving around the room, which I'm not uh, very good at, but people have seen like Dr. Foley speak. He's all the way, always up in the uh, sides of the room and it kind of keeps people on their toes. They don't know where you're going to move if they're going to be sitting, standing next to you in a couple of seconds. So uh, it really keeps you uh, in, engaged in the presentation. Humor. I think humor is a good thing to use in presentations, but you have to remember you have to remember that it should be appropriate. Think about who your audience is. If you offend somebody in the audience, you're going to lose them. They're not going to take away the point that you're trying to give them. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it's a good transition. It's a good way to keep enthusiasm up either for the presenter or for the, uh, the people in the audience. Time management. This was huge. Rehearsal helps you with this. So you know how long your presentation is going to be. Show up early when you're presenting. Know the layout of the room. Know what you're going to be doing. Know, get your presentation uploaded. And also, it's ideal for the people running the presentation, the running the conference, like uh, Mo. If you're there early, you're willing to be flexible. You can go first, you can go last, and it just uh, really helps. And it helps you get uh, invited back to do more presentations. The big thing to remember is no one's upset if you end the, end the uh, lecture early. So if you're given 45 minutes, you should really be rehearsing for a presentation that's about 30 minutes long. And if you end early, don't worry. And no one in the room will be that upset. <laughs> so finishing strong. So you should be kind of repeating your uh, learning points about five times throughout the presentation, especially the most important ones, the things that you want your uh, learners to get out of it. And then you always want a summary slide, something to really just give the take home points and hit, uh, hit everything home. And something I learned uh, later on uh, was that it's ideal to uh, ask, put up the question slide and ask questions before you give your learning points. And that was something someone taught me because you want to be the uh, person to have the last word. So let everyone else ask questions. Let those people in the audience who are going to give those comments and try to add on to your lecture, um, get all that out. And then you have that last slide at the end and you can give your learning points in your summary. So a little bit of reality. So, you guys are busy. It's hard to rehearse, and it's hard to put that extra time into these lectures. But do, do it out loud rehearsal one time. I've done it on my commute. If you drive, you can you know, uh, have, the le have the lecture. Um, if you have it memorized, and just talk it through. Uh, you are always available to send lectures to me. Uh, set up, uh, I'm always around on Mondays. We can uh, spend 20 minutes, and you can practice with me or any of the other uh, residency directors or faculty. It's going to help improve. It's going to help, uh, help you be less nervous. It's hard giving a lecture as a uh, resident, right? You're, you're not an expert probably in anything yet. I mean, a lot of you are probably experts in a lot of different things. But I guarantee when you're lecturing and presenting on a topic, you probably know more than 90% of people in the room, except for maybe a faculty uh, person who's specializing in that or has read the literature. But you read the literature in the last week or two. So be confident, and you'll be able to answer questions. Set presentations, uh, even in these set presentations like M&M, uh, maybe uh, Clinical Pearls, things where you have slide designs, you can still follow these rules and have a summary slide, an objective slide. 
and it's just going to make your overall um, learning points and presentation better. And you're learning, so don't don't be afraid to make a mistake. This is my son. Uh, any questions? <laughs> Comments? Other? I yeah. actually use the rehearsal um, for my CCM lecture, Critical Care uh, lecture, which is one of the longer lecture series that we had, and it was very useful. Like I had my fiance listen, which is also a good barometer, even though a lot of concepts can go over their heads though, but if you can get some things through to them and, and um, clear things up, it's, it's very helpful. Yeah, now medical people can help you a lot too. It's uh, pointing out fillers, mm -hmm. like ums, uh, because they're, right. they're not necessarily paying attention to the content that much, but they can kind of help you with the presentation style and public speaking as well. Any other comments from the faculty? You guys want to add anything to this stuff? I think um, the fillers are always the big thing uh, that I have to work with the whole to it. Um, I think when you watch people who speak on a regular basis, you don't realize that one of the reasons why they're such good speakers have those fillers. The so's and the ums are the big, the big fillers. And recording yourself and listening to yourself speak and seeing how many so's and ums come out uh, will bother you. Yeah. The best way to get rid of them is to actually consciously slow down your speed. Whenever you're speaking, you're probably talking too fast. I am a major fast talker. And I can tell that as people like my machine that am I dating myself with the microphone? No, what is that? What is that? Yep. Anyway, Dr. Runner. I mean, silence in a public speaking forum or presentation is pretty profound and really powerful. Get, uh, because people who aren't paying attention, they're like, why isn't anyone talking? What, what's going on? You can't you gain people's attention back. Matt? Yeah, along the lines of rehearsal, I do a lot of vis visualization. Like, when I gave my last talk, I visualized these three asking me really difficult questions. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that didn't happen, but I was like, maybe. <laughs> and it was a great talk. You did a really good job with that. It wasn't. Yes. Should be online, check it out. C pediatric C spawn. <laughs> so summary. Think about your objective. Always have an objective and summary slide. Start with your, your conclusion. Start with your summary slide. I, I think it'll help you uh, make the presentation. Max, four to five learning points. I think probably ideal three. Uh, PowerPoint's a great tool, but it's more for the audience, not for you. So just keep that in mind. And uh, time management. No one's upset if you end early. And just rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. I think it's going to help uh, your presentations go a long way. All right, thank you, guys.